Hello, this is Solar PV TV from SPI 2016. And now we have a pleasure to speak with a very, very, very busy guy, with Tom Kimbis, who is interim president of CIA, of CIA the most important uh, solar industry association here in the country. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, and uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, doing this interview with you. Why did you decide to spend a few minutes with us? Oh, why not? Look around. If you could see behind us, the, the people watching this would be able to see a show floor that's just bustling with activity. Uh, but let's convey some of this enthusiasm out to them. So, Tom, um, we had just a short chat um, uh, a few minutes ago. And I would like to ask you, because I didn't plan it, actually, but I would like to ask you about your background in the, in the solar industry. Because uh, apparently you are since 17 years, yeah? so more than me in the solar industry. Oh, well, yeah, I started in 2000 supporting the U.S. Department of Energy in energy efficiency and renewable energy. And in 2005, transferred to specifically solar. Uh, 2008-9, I was the acting uh, head of the U.S. solar program before joining uh, SIA. So I've been SIA about seven years, so I guess it's about my 17th year. Wow. Yeah. So you are like on the other side of the wall. I'm on the other <laughs> side of the wall, so you and I are brothers on this. Okay. So Tom, but actually, uh, let's speak a bit about uh, now the market in the United sure. States. Uh, recently, you published uh, the report together with um, uh, GTM Research. Could you give us, like, you know, in a few bullet points, the major findings? Sure. I think I think what people really need to know is that the U.S. market is growing, and it's growing incredibly fast. Uh, we're going to see a doubling of the market size uh, to you know, roughly around 15 gigawatts or so uh, compared to last year. That's 2x growth, which we're very pleased about. We're also seeing some trends where some states that were non-traditional states in, say, residential, uh, become involved in that. Uh, that might be like, Utah and South Carolina and others. So California is still the dominant state, but it's losing a little bit of percentage here, but it's not because they're doing anything slower, it's only because the, the entire pie is getting bigger. We're also seeing the utility scale sector uh, in 2016 become very dominant and probably will account for over 70% of the installations uh, that go in this year. Uh, I think overall the message is when you look at 2016, 2017, and 2018, you'll see that some of the larger projects that were scheduled for 2016 because of the impending end to the investment tax credit uh, were sandwiched into early projections so 2016 at 16 to 20 gigawatts. We're probably a little bit lower than that because some of the projects had the flexibility built into contracts to move them into uh, 2017 and 2018. This is a very strong industry and very diverse. But do you think also because uh, we had some discussions with a few industrials and they are quite skeptical and a bit uh, afraid about the growth next year. So what is your opinion on that? You know, I think the growth next year, what we're projecting is that you know, the growth is not going to be as high as it was from 2015 to 2016 partly because of this project push into certain, you know, kind of smushed across a few different years. Um, but we're still seeing steady growth. I mean, that might be somewhere between a 30 to 40 percent growth rate. It's going to depend uh, a lot on policy as well. We're looking at the policies. This is your job, yeah. And the policy is moving down at the, to the state level, uh, where some of my colleagues at SEA are working very hard to make sure that states are open for business. Um, there's key decisions, you know, across the country that, that we'd like to see happen. But overall, I still think the costs are, are falling to us. And with that fall, we've, from last year to this year, we saw an 18% fall in the cost of solar. And this is, we're pretty far along the cost curve in terms of solar. Um, we've got a, still got a ways to go, but I think if you told people five years ago that from 2015 to 2016, we drop close to 20% in costs, they would say there's not that much to squeeze. We're still squeezing, we're getting, we're getting very cheap. So those costs are still gonna drive the market forward, despite you know, some of the policies that, you know. And the storage is coming. And storage is coming, and the buzz here at the show, for those obviously who are not here at the show, uh, and, and listening and watching along here, almost every session I go into, people wanna know about storage. They wanna see storage, how that integrates with vehicles, storage, how that integrates with the home, storage, how it integrates on the utility scale and on the, on the distributed system. So storage is something I think that's binding a lot of our different, disparate parts of the solar community together. But you know, in Europe, um, we made some interviews with high-level politicians uh, from the European Parliament, but also from the European Commission. And in Europe, we are now speaking more 
not only just about energy transition, not even about energy and transportation transition, but we are speaking about the social change, yeah, actually. It's like a social transition. Um, is also CIA, CIA involved in this kind of activities, or you are only just focusing on the, on the policy for the solar industry, or you are having like a wider uh, vision, uh, you know, uh, with uh, regards to this topic? I think we have a wider vision. And that's why we're working with companies, uh, non-traditional companies, such as General Motors, such as Microsoft and Google, uh, because what they're trying to do is look at this as not just an incremental growth in the production of uh, solar panels as simple electric, you know, electricity producers, but changing the actual lives of everyday Americans. So they're looking 10, 20 years out, but that reality could be a lot closer. The more that our culture and our is you know, open to renewables and open to change, which is always hard, and the more that our systems and infrastructure is geared towards an electrical one, the more that we're able to inco you know, incorporate home, you know, car, energy production, and at mines. a distributed level, and our mines. So I think what we're seeing here is that there is, as you said, in the mines, it's so important, there is a social change. We're not, our mission is to grow the industry at SIA. But in growing the industry, we have to look at all the various factors and the ways, and we can't look, always look at it just through the lens of simple cost reduction or, or policy. And uh, I would like to ask you also about uh, your international cooperation, because SEA, SEA uh, joined uh, Global Solar Council, so I assume that you are focusing on the United States, but also you are considering the industry and your, let's, let's say, activities on the international level. Yeah. So could you tell us, how do you see the role of SIA in the international global community? Yeah, and I'll give you just an example. I mean, the Global Solar Council, uh, with John Smirnow leading it, uh, is doing an outstanding job, and SIA is one of the founding members of, of the GSC, the Global Solar Council. We see them as our arm, uh, working on international matters, since our own mission is uh, restricted to domestic work. So we see, but at the same time, our, we have members that come from yeah. all over the world. It's a global industry. It's a global industry. So, for instance, codes and standards work. It's so critically important. We had a seminar here yesterday that was had almost 100 people at it. And they're here because these are the types of things that standardize and unify an industry so that it drives down costs. If you don't, if you don't have, if you have that just within the 50 states, that's great, but it's much better if you're able to work internationally, and that's where it's something the Global Solar Council can provide us with guidance and provide us an avenue to achieve those sorts of cost reductions. Actually, I wanted to congratulate you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> this is for yesterday's announcement of uh, the national PV recycling scheme. So it means that also United States now, now understood that solar should be double green. It is, and I know it's something, uh, a passion of yours as well, and we're proud to, to have this announcement. We've worked with, with First Solar and Sun Power and others, Trina, on this as well. And what we're trying to do is provide a, a structure so that companies in the United States, it can be easier for them to understand the cradle to grave nature of solar, for them to seek out recycling and do so through a, uh, a centralized system of recyclers. And to date, the problem has been that a smaller and even some of the larger companies don't exactly know where to turn. So SIA can play that centralizing role in helping drive down the cost of recycling and also incentivizing them to go ahead and do the right thing. Okay, so at the end, uh, Tom, I give you the opportunity to promote a bit SIA. So in bullet points, why the companies, the international companies should join your organization? Well, I think what we see first and foremost is that international companies join SIA because they want to understand how the United States market works. It's one thing to read about it in a report, and we do put out a lot of reports and a lot of data, and that's provided to our members, but it's another thing to be connected to those within the United States that are really driving our market forward. We're convinced that we will be at a, a 20 gigawatt market by 2021, uh, and I think that should be attractive to both U.S. and foreign companies, and we feel that we're the gateway for foreign companies to come into the U.S. market, to get connected to individuals, to get connected to policymakers, to understand a complex system that is 50 different states. That's hard for um, uh, you know, folks coming from, uh, companies coming from overseas to understand uh, the structure that we have. But you forgot one thing. What is that? 
that you are organizing this awesome event. <laughs> <laughs> Solar Power International is a lot of fun. We have about 17, 18,000 people here on site across three different uh, facilities, and uh, I invite anybody out there in the solar industry to come check it out. We'll be in Las Vegas again next year at the Mandalay Bay, which has a phenomenal solar system on top of it, and one of the largest uh, in, on the West Coast. That's a rooftop system. Um, and it is just, it, it's a place where you can learn, you can network, and you can grow your business. And it's uh, just great, I can confirm. <laughs> He's having a great time, <laughs> let me tell you. Okay, thank you so much, Tom. That was Solar PV TV, together with uh, Tom Kimbis, who is the interim president of SIA, Solar Energy Industry Association from the United States. Thanks for watching.